game of the year. We're at that point. Traditionally on this channel, what I do is the very last day of the year, I have a video go out that talks about my game of the year for that year. So for anybody that's getting to, you know, December, this is just not only for this year, but for future years. If you're following the channel, first off, thank you so much. I'm Mr. Mario. Thank you for, you know, checking me out and take some time out of your day to watch this video and check out the channel. But if you're on this channel this year or whether it be in the next few years, and it's around December time, and you're really wanting to know what my game of the year is, seriously, just wait until the end of the year, and I reveal it. So it's kind of been the tradition like that the past few years. But I want to talk about my game of the year, and it is, it is crazy <laughs> that we are at this point. This year just flew by, and I, I think it's just because of a bunch of things, at least for me personally, it's kind of one of those things as you get older, then, you know, time starts flying by, but I also started working a full-time job all this year, graduated in 2015 as well, too, so... That was all fun. Uh, very proud of that, by the way. But we're going to be getting into this right here. So you all are seeing a few things right here. And you all are probably thinking, oh, man, you know, it's definitely a PlayStation game. It's definitely a PlayStation game. Look how much PlayStation stuff is here. It's got to be Last Guardian, that overhyped garbage right there, or this shit right here that's pretty much Final Fantasy Kids Edition. Well, I've talked about these a little bit. If you all have uh, checked out, uh, I'm not sure about this because um, I'm going to be doing it right after this video. I kind of do my videos in different orders, uh, but I've at least talked about this right here and given my thoughts on it in a video review and also my video that should have come out at this point, which would have been the uh, every single game I beat in 2016 video. But anyways, it's not a PlayStation game. Some people might be saying, oh, there's just this lonely Xbox One controller. It's not, it's not an Xbox One game either. It's something I can't physically touch, but it's it's not a PC game. It's technically a digital game, and you know I should I should probably change out a little bit for this. So um, hold on. My game of the year for 2016. If 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 I have to really say what it is, it's Pokemon Go. Something I, I never would have predicted, I would have said. I'm not a Pokemon hater by any means, but just the fact that I am saying my favorite game that was released this year was a mobile game, uh, I don't know if that's just my taste changing or if that shows the status of gaming we're in. Because honestly, we got really good games this year. And that's why I had these things out right here. This game, The Last Guardian, I, I had a fantastic time with it. Personally, I, I really enjoyed it. Now, I gave it a good review. I said it's at minimum a good game. I thought it was fantastic and I loved it. But I just, I don't feel like it's game of the year material. It just didn't get there. And this game, World of Final Fantasy, I mean, as you can see, I got the game. I even got the guide for this. I don't even remember the last time I bought a guide for a game, uh, at least a new game. And I got this because I actually want to play through it completely, and I want to figure everything out with it as much as I can. I got this because, you know, I love this game, the little bit of I've played so much, and I regret that I haven't been able to get into it as much. I probably should have picked up the game earlier. I regret that I haven't been able to play it as much, but honestly, if it was a console game, or, you know, uh, uh, any type of other game on any other platform that's not mobile, it, it there's a good chance my game of the year would have been World of Final Fantasy. The little bit I played this game, I absolutely loved. Now, I can't fairly give it game of the year, just because I haven't played it all that much. I played it for a few hours, and I, you know, maybe the game gets horrible at the end. Maybe it drags on too long, I don't know. There's a lot you have to take into consideration when picking a game of the year, and that's what I'm going to talk about with this. But that's why, you know, Last Guardian, although I loved it, I thought it was fantastic, It's there's something. It's just not game of the year material, in my opinion. World of Final Fantasy, I love that it doesn't take itself seriously. I had such a, like, such a fun time playing the game, and I loved everything about it when I was playing it. But I haven't given it enough time to really judge and see if it is truly a game of the year for 2016 for me. And there's other games as well, too, that I'm sure are excellent that I haven't finished yet or I haven't put enough time into. Titanfall 2, I'm actually really disappointed I haven't finished that this year. But, you know, I have 2017 for that, I guess. But when it comes to Pokemon Go, I'm just mind blown that something on this device right here, to me, is beating out what I have on console and what I have on PC. And there's a few reasons why. First off, the main thing is, 
this was a dynamic game that let me actually go outside to play it and everything. Like, I had to go out, actively play this game. While I was while I was really into it, the first, like, few months it came out during the summertime, it came out at an opportune time. Everyone was playing it. It took the world by storm. And on top of that, it was just... I wanted to play Pokemon Go. I wanted to go outside. I wanted to hang out with friends and play Pokemon Go. I went, As an adult, I wanted to do that. And I was going to the parks. I was seeing all these other people play Pokemon Go. And pops, parks were just flooded with people. And it was crazy to see. And it was real humbling as well, too. Kind of sad that we had to use an app like that to get us all to do it. And now it's kind of, you know, really lost interest. But I just had such a fun time with that. And I put so many hours into it. And I didn't want to play anything on my PC. I didn't want to play anything on my consoles. I didn't want to play anything on a handheld. Because with Pokemon Go, you end up playing this game as, you know, as your life is going on. You don't, it's not like other games, for example, like any type of game on PC or on console, for example, where you have to actually sit down and play it, where you have to, you know, kind of just put your life on pause, play it, and then go back to it. No, you're actually going outside. You're getting exercise and everything. I mean, it helped a lot of people. It helped me a bit as well, too. So that was a real nice thing. I met some real awesome people playing Pokemon Go, still friends with them. And, you know, I've had some real good experiences with them. Unfortunately, the past few months, my interest is just really died off on it. I don't know what it is. Some people might say, oh, it's because it's the same thing. It's because it's boring. It's because they haven't had some. I don't, I don't know what it is. Um, I think it's just because I play games and then I move on and then I'll get nostalgic and I'll go back and play that game maybe, but I don't stick with the game. And the fact that I stuck with this for so many months, uh, cause I played it a lot less, but when I finally, I call it my retirement. When I finally kind of said to myself, yeah, I'm kind of done with Pokemon Go. It's not that I'm never playing it again. It's that I'm not going to play it nearly as often. Occasionally I might play it. Uh, by the time it got to that point, it was December of this year. And this game came out, what, in May or June? Came out sometime during the summer. I'm pretty sure I got about six months of enjoyment out of this game. Which for some people might say, oh, that's horrible. But for me, the fact that I game hop so much, that's pretty big to me. And plus, I can still play it anytime I want to, really. I mean, not so much now, because, like, one thing they did that really annoyed me is uh, if you have an Android phone, if you have root access on your phone, so my phone is rooted right here, you have to essentially use a few bypasses to get onto Pokemon Go. And they ended up using Safety Net on there, so uh, iOS users, y'all are fine. If you're jailbroken, you're fine. You've had bypasses since day one. For root users, a few updates ago, they end up putting in safety net checks. And because of that, if you fail safety net because you have root a device, you can't play Pokemon Go. And it got to the point, I actually, for anybody that knows how much I love root access on phones, I was stuck on my phone for a few months because of Pokemon Go. I was stuck. But just recently, I decided to, you know, flash over a image, like I ended up, you know, reflashing my phone, I rerouted it, and I don't have any Pokemon Go bypasses on here right now, because at this point I'm like, I just, to me, I would rather have, since I'm not playing Pokemon Go nearly as often and I don't have an interest in it now, I would rather have root access over having a dead app on my phone. I have a backup phone that I can play it on that's all stock, but still, that just shows, it got to the point for me I was giving up root access just so I could play Pokemon Go easily without having 20 bypasses on deck. So, that's kind of why it's my game of the year. Some people might be disappointed, some people might be shocked. Trust me, I was, I was kind of disappointed and shocked in myself too. But, I even said, when I first started playing Pokemon Go, I'm like, if this is the game, if this still stays the same, I'm still loving it, this is going to be my game of the year. And even though, yeah, I've kind of moved off of it, it still has to be my favorite game that I've played in 2016. And that is why for 2016 releases, Pokemon Go on mobile phones and tablets and all that stuff, on iOS and Android, Pokemon Go is my game of the year. I definitely had a fun time with it, and it was quite an experience. Really enjoyed it. And that's not to say that we didn't have any other good games. We had several great games on consoles, on PC, whatever it is, on handhelds. But Pokemon Go was just my personal game of the year. Anyways, this is all about me, man, at this point. I want to know what you all think. With the last moments of 2016, or maybe since, you know, you're watching this in 2017, let me know what your game of the year was. I really look forward to hearing it. And if you have a description why, I'd love to know as well, too. So, game of the year, I definitely want to hear it. Anyways, this is Mr. Mario signing off. Thank you all for watching, everyone. If you enjoyed this video, 
A like would be appreciated if you hated it. A dislike would be fine as well, too. I'll see you all next year. It's weird saying that. I'll see you all next year. By the way, if you're at the end of this video, I completely forgot to mention the story about this on here. This is actually my childhood Pikachu I had when I was in like first grade, right? And when I grew up, of course, you know, my brothers got all my hand-me-downs. And recently, I ended up getting this back because my brothers came to visit and they're just like, Hey Danny, we don't need this anymore. And they just gave me this Pikachu. I mean, look, this even has my name on it. That's not my handwriting, but this thing is old. As you can see, he doesn't have his eyes or anything. But yeah, that, that's the story behind this thing. So, uh... Welcome home, Pikachu. It's weird having you back as an adult now.